Hi, this is Decentered Media, conversations about community-focused communications for positive social change. Hello, Rob Watson here for Decentered Media, and this is the topic uh, discussion points uh, outline for this week's this week's community media decentered media community media meetup. Uh, what we do every two weeks, every fortnight, is we get together online and we have a chat about uh, issues and topics related to the development of and the um, the the uh, application of community media. And our topic this week is to be um, thinking about how community media is used as a uh, a learning tool, as an educational opportunity. And I just want to run through some ideas about how that might work. If you want to take part in this conversation, uh, go to patreon.com slash decentered media or go to the decentered media website decentered.co.uk and you can sign up uh, to our patreon um there's some uh, uh, low low price access uh, for students and unwaged and then there's a another tier another couple of tiers for people who might want to help out and it really does help just having a, a couple of extra pound um uh, you know the price of a coffee uh, per month coming in to help pay for web hosting and Zoom calls and uh, all the rest of it. <clears throat> you have to forgive me. I think I've had COVID for the last week as well, which means that I've kind of been st- struggling a little bit, and um, so I thought I'll just take it easy, uh, easy today. So I'm I'm comfortably dressed, um, and I've had a couple of painkillers, and uh, uh, but my I might be kind of tickly throat uh, still uh, but it seems to be subsiding a bit anyway enough about that but what I want to talk about today is really how we think about community media as a as a learning tool now I've, I've taught around this area now for I don't know what 20 years nearly and um, there are certain things that you look out for in any situation now I'm, I, as you might know I'm agnostic about the form of media that we use I think Think of this as community-focused communications. So the purpose is to enhance, support, promote, develop uh, opportunities for a sense of community. And what does that mean? Well, that means a sense of mutual belonging, a sense of interaction, a sense of civic engagement, discussion, deliberation, community development, all those kind of things. And that uses media as a tool or as a focal point for that development. So it doesn't matter what the form of media is. It can be Facebook groups, it can be community radio, it can be podcasting, it can be writing blogs, it can be tweets, it can be, um, I mean, sitting having a conversation with a friend over a cup of tea is probably one of the best forms of community media we know of. Uh, so you know, keep a broad, open mind about it. But what's important is the purpose that that serves in enhancing and supporting the development of the people involved and the community that they form. <clears throat> so we're, we're thinking about this in terms of a developmental process. So a learning model is is really essential for that, as well as thinking in terms of policies, thinking in terms of structures, uh, thinking in terms of um, if you like, ideological uh, concerns. What we really want to be focusing on is what people get from their community involvement with community media. And I always say it's not what people get from it, it's what they become by it. So how do we learn? What do we learn? How does it change us for the better? Do we have a better sense of understanding of the needs of others? Um, and are we in a way, do we value those individuals that we are working with and that we are engaged with? And do we value ourselves in this process? So it's a reflexive process. It's something that we think about as we're doing. And as we engage in this process, it's not just about acquiring skills, it's not just about, these, these can be very useful, but it's not just about, you know, kind of coming up with a, a, 
a CV that's, you know, 10 pages long. It's really about what the quality and the value of those experiences are and what that does for our sense of agency and independence. So where do we draw from our sense of um, independent, critical thinking, our sense of social value as individuals and as groups and how we interact with and, and engage with other people uh, who have different views and come from different contexts and perspectives and cultural backgrounds. So that's the kind of broad context. But <clears throat> there's two um, people I've, I've found useful in this regard. And one is John Dewey and the other is uh, Jean uh, Piaget. Um, and the the framework that they offer is, is different but connected. And John Dewey is a pragmatist philosopher and educationalist American who really looked at the idea or thought about the idea that, you know, what is the purpose of learning? And he was really concerned with the idea that it had to be of, of practical use. And there's a famous phrase that he uses about, uh, you know, the, the, the person whose shoe pinches. Uh, how do you... Well, the, the, the cobbler can help fix that, but the person who's wearing the shoe has to be involved in the process of telling them where it hurts, you know, where it pinches. And you can't have one without the other. There's there's no point in just coming in as experts, technical experts, to suggest this is how learning should take place. It needs to involve the learner as well. And, and Piaget, uh, he uh, uh, recognised in the early part of the 20th century that there is a kind of pattern and structure to our learning, particularly as children. He focused on children, but I think some of these things can be applicable to adults as well, and they mainly focus on uh, work with adults. But the idea that um, we, we have a structure to our cognitive development, we have a structure to the way that we encounter the world, the way that we think about the world and the way that we uh, grow to adapt and engage with the world. That comes through in our childhood and our adolescence in a very kind of structured way. And there are ways that we can learn about, there are things that we can learn from that process and structure, which says that, you know, we're, we're not just, it's not just a process of accumulation. It's not just a process of pouring, uh, you know, wine into empty vats uh you know it's not, we're not just topping up things but there's an active process of engagement going on and it kind of constructs the world around us if we're given the right tools and the right critical thinking tools and the right tools for learning about how to engage with the world um in in that due process and due time that's accorded with our ability our capacity at that time then we can engage with the world very successfully so he, you know, things like recognizing the value of play, recognizing the value of exploration, recognizing the value of testing uh, and imitation, all those things that children do almost instinctively, which are outside of the taught curriculum, if you like, of uh, uh, some forms of education. It's a while since I've looked at educational policies, and uh, perhaps I'm a little bit out of date in terms of thinking what the, the latest. I'm not an educationalist, but I think these are kind of useful touch points that help help me. So a kind of Jewian perspective uh, focuses on the concept of reflection. And that's an interesting, you know, kind of uh, process. You know, what, what is reflection? Well, reflection, um, and we want it, it implies an active process of thinking, uh, and, and taking stock and understanding this, like monitoring the process as we're going through it, uh, reflection or, or as we've gone through it. So reflection is something which helps us to extract a kind of form of meaning from what would otherwise just be a set of experiences, almost random experiences. And it's a way of putting things into some kind of organisation. It's a way of saying that we can look at those experiences and we can you know, kind of follow from them in the sense that we know that they're, if they're used purposefully, reflection can lead to transformation. You know, that moment where you go from unconsciously not knowing what you don't know 
to consciously knowing what you do know and that kind of arc of learning. And that sometimes involves pushing things out. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's challenging. Uh, sometimes it's not quite as straightforward as affirming our feelings, but it's actually about challenging our feelings and our position in the world and reflecting on that. So learning is a transformative experience. And what it requires, according to you, is a kind of sense of active participation and self-direction. And that is the aim. We start off in an immature state where we're not able to apply a sense of active participation and we're not able to recognize in what way we are directing our, our learning. We are perhaps, you know, in, in you, you see young children running around aimlessly, just reacting and responding to things. Whereas actually what will happen when we mature and if we mature successfully, we're able to control our impulses and we're able to direct uh, our impulses and reach strategic aims and goals, which are um, focused on not just the well-being for ourselves, but also the well-being of others. So we extend our worldview beyond ourselves and we extend that out into the world to encompass other people. We go from that stage of thinking about that egotistical stage of thinking, it's all just about me. Uh, and we actually then start to realise that we have an impact on other people. Now, we might argue that, uh, you know, some people never get past that stage and all they can ever do is is think about themselves and respond to uh, uh, situations and environments where the, the other person is is unknown to them and they don't, they've never thought about it. They've never had to think about it. And so there's a, a broader set of principles and ideas here that are bound both in terms of the individual but also collectively as well so dewey was you know kind of argues for a child-centered approach <clears throat> that is not uh the same as a child-led approach uh and and the child-centeredness is really making sure that the child is in a position where they can they can test and 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 be challenged uh, in a way that is constructive, rather than kind of you know following their every every whim. Uh, and 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 there's often a kind of uh, a per, 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 what's the word I'm looking for permissiveness that's applied to some of these ideas, which is actually a mischaracterization of them. It's not to say that you just let children take the lead and do whatever they want. Um, it is about saying how do they fit within society, how do they fit, but the, the, the best thing I ever learnt from when I was a school governor was the head teacher, Alison, she said to me, children are really, really smart, they know what they, they're smart people. And you should never have a you should never say no to them unless you've got a good reason, because they will work things out as long as you're there to help explain what the consequences are. So, yes, jump in that puddle if you so wish. But just remember, we're, we're on our way to, you know, a family function and your nice set of clothes might get dirty and damaged. And so therefore, it's not the best option to do. Children have to learn that as a developmental process. <clears throat> and we all carry carry you know we all have to learn that as we get older uh, that there are things that we thinking through what the consequences are that and and at what point is it a good idea that we should jump into puddles we should just get on with things so it's not to say that even as mature adults that impulse that comes with childhood uh, is something that maybe we we don't use properly uh, and having a bit of fun and playing excuse me, is 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 something that uh, we should look at. But Dewey was also particularly interested in the, the role of education as part of the fulfilment and the development of a democratic society. He really saw education as something, an informed citizenship um, and, and a way of recognising and embracing differences within our society and differences within and between civilizations, uh, and so that we're not closed off in a bubble of our own views and our own habits, but we're part of a policy, a, politi a political uh, uh, commonwealth where we're engaged with one another and we have discourse and we learn the maturity of being able to speak with one, one another uh, and to engage in a way that is purposeful so dewey's um you know uh, educational cognitive development model emphasized kind of a hands-on approach and that kind of active participation and transformative experience and 
that it's in our interest and education is in our interest. And I think community media is a great vehicle for this to uh, to extend our social and cultural worlds for us. Um, my frustration sometimes uh, is we have very limited cultural op- opportunities uh, in modern British society. I think we've gone backwards in, uh, in some way and that we need to, to further push the boundaries and community media could be a great vehicle for that because it's you know, if it's got the right kind of um, uh, underpinning. PHA's model <coughs> emphasised uh, this, what's called the constructivist and there's a the, the constructivist model of learning and there is some pushback against constructivism at the moment in, in on, on, online discussions because it, again it's seen as being kind of openly permissive and i think that's a mischaracterization what pj was arguing was that these are kind of pretty much well established observable uh biological functions of learning in children it carry it goes through from when we're born through to our our, our maturity uh post pubescence post adolescence and that there's a cognitive process that we we just you know, it it we see it time and time again, and and we just have to be careful about how we map that out, and that it is, and and careful not to disrupt that process as well. So if we impose too rigid an environment of rote learning, for example, we miss out on the capacity for children to learn by play. Uh, if we impose uh, too theoretical, too too much focus on thinking and abstract concepts, we lose the focus on engagement and getting your hands dirty and you know doing things so you know pj's model is is much more about the cognitive reality of our individual growth and again it's a child focused uh, child centered approach which what is in the interest of the child um because you can you know you can you can impose the weight of a tradition and a civilization and a culture onto children uh, that just dis- you know it's too heavy for any it's a too much of a burden for anybody to continue to hold on to it's always been done like this this is how we've done it this is who we are uh, and and this this is your responsibility and you've got to learn to live up to this rather than taking them through the process of saying these are the problem solving things these are the tools that we have uh, and these are the drives that help us to 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 learn where the boundaries are and how to engage with one another <clears throat> so piaget's um idea is that children construct a mental model and uh, i think all le- learners we construct a mental model about where we are with the world and that, that that's not fixed it's it changes given the circumstances um, but if there's a sense that the mental model is uh, out of balance uh, and dysfunctional, um, then the world doesn't make sense uh, to us. So we're looking at ways of helping the world to make sense practically, uh, um, psychologically, spiritually, uh, and where do we fit within that? And uh, how do we recognise what the patterns of development are? within that so Piaget has uh, note, notes various stages so the the <coughs> the early stages from birth are sensor sensor motory and we 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 you know we we physically interact with the world we put things in our mouths uh, uh we we hold on to things uh the pre-operational stage is the stage that occurs between two and seven years old and this is where you're kind of learning to use language and symbols and you see this in you know the 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 children's drawing things that they can't do like conceiving faces conceiving objects uh looking at things in perspective uh suddenly you know starts to grow and change and these are very regular patterns of development then there's the concrete operational stage uh, which is around about 7 to 11 uh, which is where we start to introduce logic and we start to introduce concrete uh, sensory activity so we can measure things we can recognize the distinction and the difference and the value uh, that exists between things and then following this is the formal operational stage where we go out um, and we apply that those sensory and theoretical ideas in situations 
uh, both hypothetical situations we're able to abstract, but also in practical uh, situations as well. So what PJ argues is that the kind of the goal is to think about how these mechanisms operate over time within individuals, but also as part of a, a, a group um, process um, and that they are tied to how we biologically mature and that we need to have that kind of space. The reason why I think this is important to for, for a kind of model for community media is to kind of remind ourselves that, you know, <clears throat> learning is as much a embodied process as it is an abstract process. And that by introducing different kinds of concepts, we you know, practical concepts, learning through practice, um, is that that's when we you know we can engage and we can do things in different ways. And not everybody has the same strengths uh, or the same weaknesses in their development model. You know, it's it's we we come at things from different um, perspectives and we bring that with us. And we can look at a context, we can look at a situation, we can look at an issue, a problem, and we can come up with different solutions. And some of those might be driven by sensory engagement, some of them might be driven by abstract theoretical engagement, some might be you know, developed by measuring things and calculating things and abstractly looking at processes. But it, you know, each has a value and what we're trying to do is we're trying to say where does that where is that value where and how is that value realized so i think for community media it's kind of useful to step back from this because it kind of think there is a developmental framework that underpins um or can underpin community media and it kind of you know when we think about things like uh skills acquisition and how we're enhancing our sense of capability um you know, are we putting unnecessary hurdles in front of people? Uh, are the tasks that we're asking to people to engage with are they? Uh, um, where's the best form of now? Where's the best form of learning from that? Now I'm the kind of I I, I kind of tend to like giving people a chance to have a go, reflecting on it, and then coming back to it and improving it. So iterative development, rather than saying okay, now you've got to sit through. 13 hours of being taught about this then you do an exam and then you get to start to practice it and do it um i'm not into that kind of linear kind of uh, um thinking I, I kind of like the test operate test evaluate tote you know, try it once reflect on it see what works what doesn't try it again you can always get better uh, and if you don't get better we'll find you something else to do and that's much more suited to an open kind of form of learning. But that frustrates some learners. Some learners, you know, kind of would just sit down with the manual, follow the rules. What is it I'm allowed to say? What is it I'm supposed to do? And, you know, there's there's different uh, uh, dispositions for learning. Um, but what we're trying to do, and I think what's really important with this, is that sense of, um, you know, the self-efficiency, the... <coughs> the way which we're able to uh, there's a great phrase I, I like using which is also catalytic how does our learning sustain itself you know how do we move on to the next thing and keep learning rather than waiting to be told what to do and what to think we want to be inspired to learn the next thing and the next thing and to add and then bring other people into that process as well so i i look for this to be some kind of a a process of um accumulation but also a process of drawing others into this 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 way of working so it requires a sense of reflexive practice what are you doing sometimes we we do things on the basis of not really thinking about what we're actually doing we've acquired habit motor skill habit um we we think that this is well we've heard this this is what i grew up with uh you know 30 years ago listening to radio one or radio two well we should do it like that well why do we need to do it like that? Are there other ways that we can do it? Is there anything that's a bit more, you know, testing and flexible? 
Uh, so our learning is in, is culturally and socially engaged. So that reflection needs to be fed back into it, and but not just on the basis of if you like a feedback loop. A feedback loop is really important. You know, when you go to a to a learning session and somebody gives you a form at the end of it and says, "We want your feedback," I always think you've missed the you you've kind of missed the whole point of the session. You know, the the whole point of the session is that you shouldn't if you've done it well, you shouldn't need feedback, uh, and and just simply that people are walking out the room talking. And, and they get on with it and they do new things. That's kind of sufficient. <clears throat> but it requires a, a focus on active participation. And with the community reporters model that we've created, uh, working with uh, uh, Edward Cartwright at DMU, it's really about kind of, you know, kind of how can you put people directly into the driving seat for use and things not having to wait not having to defer once you know a few basic skills it's like you know you, you drive and test once you've passed your drive and test you're free to travel around the roads and drive everywhere that you want to um you know so why why should we you know put barriers in front of people uh there, there are certain things that we might want to be better at and more skilled at and more technically able but the general sense that we're able to circulate and move around but crucially as well, because this empowers people to give, a, you know, the, to, to to enable them to have a voice and representation within their community. And that might start off, you know, the, the, the people that we're trying to bring in with community media are often the ones who have got the least voice in any situation, the most marginalised, the most the easy, easily forgotten about. You don't, And when you... I've said this many times, but when you, you know, Raymond Williams says in order to democratise our media, something like this, in order to democratise our media, we've got to deprofessionalise it. And there's no mystique about media. I mean, we've entered an age now where the technology is, is ubiquitous, largely. Um, and all it takes is somebody to sit down and put a couple of thoughts together and then record that and share that. And it's no longer the case that you have to go and find a way to work within a professionalised organisation to make your point. And maybe we've made it too easy sometimes because everybody's out there sharing all sorts of opinions. But, you know, that's that's the technology enables us to do that now. And the, the growth of YouTube and Twitter and X, as it's now called, and, you know, Facebook is something that we, you know, is, is really highly regarded. But to use those things, I was, I was like asking people a question, uh, yeah, you know, how, how how did you learn how to use social media? And and everybody said, well, you didn't have to take a test. You didn't have to get permission from somebody in a college or a school or a university to use this. You learnt from doing it, and you learnt from your friends. And for good or ill, uh, you're most you know a lot of people are able to use this and share maybe some simple things, but they're, 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 they're engaging with social media and they don't need permission. Now, there's a, you know, the, 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 there's naturally a, a tapering as, as, as you get more technically specific, uh, then the, the learning, the, those barriers to demonstrate that you're able to engage, like, you know, I don't want my cardiologist or brain surgeon to have learnt their work from YouTube. I want them to be verified and tested. Um, but, you know, the barista that I go into the coffee shop, uh, uh, you know, the local coffee shop, I don't mind if they've learned everything they know about, you know, coffee from YouTube because it's a brilliant resource and why not use that? So, you know, it's it's what's suited to the circumstances. The thing at the core of this, though, is the sense that it's about problem solving, critical thinking and problem solving. You know, these these are in short supply sometimes. And we need to look at situations and go, what is the issue at hand? How can we fix that or facilitate that without imposing something, a solution which doesn't work for large numbers of people, uh, but is actually addresses problems with the minimum amount of input? Um, and that critical thinking to be able to sort things out. Now, I've, you know, I've said this again to people quite often recently. I've adopted using ChatGPT and uh, the artificial intelligence um, only, only on a very basic level. Um, but it's so good at being able to facilitate and help and support me in developing a lot more work than I was able to do. But I've I've been taught and I've been open to the process of thinking skills and they help me to use these tools correctly and hopefully judiciously. Um, whereas, 
you know, rather than just waiting, I'm not just putting my money in a slot machine and getting an answer generated out of it. You, there has to be some input from people, some 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 uh, some humans. <clears throat> so this is part of a collaborative process. It's part of a lifelong process. It's part of a democratic engagement process, and it has an impact on our communities. The better our better we are at articulating our own stories and points of view and hosting our own discussions through our own platform media platforms the better we are uh, the better we'll be thought about by other people and the better we'll be able to hold our own when it comes to allocation of resources and justification of why we should you know kind of be, be supported if we're just waiting for somebody else to come along and report on our behalf we're going to miss out we always do uh, whereas if we're able to articulate our own voice and raise our own concerns then we are in a better position <clears throat> so dewey um kind of really thought that there was an, a dewey and piaget kind of you know there's certain stages to the development process of learning. So there's a foundational stage, which is about engagement and about skills development. There's an exploration stage where we get involved with the project and it's about participating in, in a project. And that's where we kind of engage through collaborative learning. So we're bouncing ideas away from each other and we're coming to, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts but then there's also the reflection stage where we can discuss and look at something and say okay how's that gone how's that how's that worked and put together some kind of assessment that says yeah okay this was effective this was appropriate this wasn't uh we're getting the best out of this and that constant sense of of revisiting things now some people that that's very problematic for some people they don't want to engage in that they just want to get on and do what they do without asking any other questions. But nothing stays the same. Nothing is static. The world changes around us. So what we thought was useful to use to communicate with other people 30 years ago is no longer useful now. And we have to, you know, we have to adapt and we have to change and we have to remember that. So <clears throat> you know, we move into a process of advanced, and that advanced stage of learning is what we might call meta-learning, where you're learning how to learn. And yeah, that's really important about you're not just learning what to do in the immediate circumstance, but you're learning about how the learning model can be applied in different circumstances. So you you suddenly step up in terms of being able to see other learning models and other approaches to learning, which can be adapted and changed. And that helps us to look at, you know, the differences we talked about earlier about the difference in people's disposition between you know sensory learners and thinking learners uh, and you see this played out anybody who's done any teaching sees this played out constantly is that you know in order for somebody to understand something whether it's an emotional issue or whether it's a logic-based issue uh, you have to have some kind of a, a, a affinity to it to understand why it is important and what what is meaningful and what you need to be able to do is step above that and to look at that and to look across those things and say, okay, these are the appropriate circumstances for this. <clears throat> and community media is a, you know, it, it, it's, it's a less form or well, an informal way of learning. So you're drawing on the assets that are within the community as well. You're drawing on people's uh, learnt experience, lived experience and learnt experience as they've travelled through life and acquired some wisdom and knowledge for the University of Hard Knocks or, you know, the, the whatever they come at. And and that value of what people bring, I think that's the starting point. Is looking for people you know, every participant and every volunteer in a community media project has brings value as an individual with them. And that they everybody can contribute in some way. Uh, and we're, what we're not doing is we're not just saying, well, because you can't work at a technically proficient level, a professional level, to use that awful phrase, then you are invalidated within this. And that kind of, you know, that separation is that, no, let's look for what people uh, contribute uh, rather than what, if you like, suppose standard that they're meeting, because it's not always uh, the best way of doing things. So there's a way that we can do this as a kind of multi-stage approach. Um, we can, uh, and in the notes of, 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 I'm not going to go through them now, but I've put like 
a, a set of criteria for what this multi-stage approach will be. So it's kind of how do we define our objectives and what the indicators are of our learning um, and how do we monitor things and what are the kind of feedback mechanisms and, and how do we understand and come to a view through peer engagement? Uh, because and, and and at what point do we do we know that it's been successful and that we can get other people are picking it up and using it and adapting it and changing it for their circumstances so what i suppose what we're trying to get out of it and it always in my experience when you're working with people i always try and you know focus on these principles is that you know it's it's learning in through and with community media is about individual empowerment uh it's about everybody individually um finding something that they can contribute and and i've worked with people who are uh, you know kind of experts academics um who are very good at exploring and sharing their technical knowledge but actually when it comes to f- having a conversation with members of the public uh, they they're not so great at that and so you kind of trying to bring that technical expertise into something which can be more, more widely shared, and that's a skill. And then when they get it, it's like kind of oh great, okay, you know, you kind of you you can you 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 you've shifted your context and your perspective. So that empowerment can be, you know, from people who are already well established in a a, a, a theoretical field. Uh, but what they're not well established at is disseminating that and and breaking down those 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 that bu- breaking through that bubble, if you like, of of the 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 expert led process. Conversely, there are people who are in you know general members of the public who are very expert on topics, uh, but who don't penetrate that bubble. Uh, and I suppose what we're trying to do with 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 academic institutions, or we should be aiming to do with academic institutions, is to have that more permeable, so that there's more of a crossover. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is in the service of community engagement and community cohesion. It's in the engagement of uh, democratic participation, civic engagement, public dialogue, uh, and it has an educational value for itself. Uh, the virtue and value of learning and self-improvement in itself that's that's kind of one of the you know the Ruskian concept of, of of value of what we get as individuals and what we what we become as individuals and how we grow and expand and develop uh, but also the, you know kind of in terms of preserving and developing a sense of cultural um, cultural identity but also a sense of uh, preserving our culture. Uh, and preserving a sense of who we are, marking who we are. We are, we we are transitory beings, and we we you know we only live for a short time, and we have to leave things for posterity, and we do that through culture. That's what our you know our culture is for. It's to you know to to bequeath things that would otherwise be, and and it, you know often, and I'm not talking about grand things, big monuments, you know, big museums with important. Uh, you know the small things that we do on a daily basis can be incredibly important, but also you know that that kind of sense of innovation and creativity where we get the opportunity to create to to express ourselves in one way or another, and that can be as simple as a conversation, uh, and that could be a, as simple as sharing a memory. Uh, and in a few weeks' time, I'm going to be running a workshop at the uh, Saturday Heritage Fair. Uh, at the Adult Education, 28th of October, if you're around, uh, in Leicester. And it will be about capturing stories and learning how to listen to one another, to stories of belonging. I've, I've entitled it, it's, uh, it's going to focus on memories for people growing up in Leicester or arriving in Leicester. Uh, and, and that kind of cultural heritage, cultural archive is a very simple practice and learning how to do that and learning how to engage with people is is, is quite important. So it's, it's a model of active learning. It's a model of we can use all the different forms of media that we've got to hand. Um, as I say, I'm not I, I don't try and police what form of media is most important. I think people have to learn how to use different forms of media and benefit from them in different ways. Um, Right. If you want to get more information, as I said earlier, go to decentered.co.uk. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at decentered media. 
I think I'm on Threads as well, at Decentered Media. Um, I think I'm on Mastodon somewhere and you know, YouTube as well, uh, at Decentered Media. Um, you can get all of the links to, to these via the uh, Decentered Media website, which is decentered.co.uk. And if you want to subscribe and take part, into the com- part in the conversation, then it's patreon.com slash decentered media. Uh, but, you know, Give, it, give us a shout. Uh, uh, any support would be more than welcome. Uh, I'm very happy to look for more com- more topics of conversation uh, as you suggest them. Um, and we'll have a, uh, uh, you know, think about how we can ensure that community, community media is relevant to people's needs and experiences. Uh, but until next time, thank you very much. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow us on Instagram and Twitter at decentered media.